This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our Farming Simulator 22 Map First Impressions video. Today, we're going to take a look at Northeast End Crossplay. But before that, this video is brought to you by Carrie Mullins and Delilah Paxiron. Thank you for being farm barons. So the Northeast End map can be found over at the farming simulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for all platforms. Let me read you a little bit of the description. Inspired by the areas of the Venetian coast, this Italia map is reflecting the area that is typically used for cultivation of arable land for animal feed and intensive viviculture. This map includes 128 totally flat fields with multiple generic selling stations, 500 kilowatt BGA, dairy, winery, mill, bakery, as production locations. Two farmyards are available, one for livestock and one for arable land. This map does have a custom crop counter also that has been set up to reflect the area in real life. Now, this map also includes seven required mods. So in addition to the map mods that we are going to use, when we typically look at maps, they are additional field info, additional game settings, field lease, field calculator, and precision farming. We're also going to be using the cow husbandry, double rod mat fence pack, the e-tunnel reinforced arc, the Italian house, the Pieve building, the silos 200 pack, and the Vineyard Poles Pack. Now, we will tell you, if you load this map up in farm manager mode or start from scratch, you'll find that the farms are built out exactly how you see them here in new farmer mode. You do have machinery in all play modes. You do not own any land, though, in those alternate play modes. And here we are. We load into the map for the very first time kind of in town. Let's go ahead and take a look at the map itself. We've got a rather interesting set of crops that are pre-planted on this map compared to what we typically see when we load into maps. Let's go ahead and take a look at our lands area. You'll see we start out by owning kind of the unbuyable land, the border area, the town itself, all of the cell points and such. Now we also have Farmland 96, that is the main starting farm. That is a dairy farm that can be bought for $157,000. We also own Farmland 98, 75, and 76, as well as 58. There is a BGA on the map that is Farmland ID 54 for $929,000. And then the arable farm is going to be Farmland ID 34 for $112,000. Now, we do not have all the crops available to us in Farm Sim 22 on this map. In fact, we are missing cotton and sugarcane. But what we do have are some additional crops in alfalfa, clover, and I have to say this may be the first time that we have seen this in FS22, forage sorghum. Not to be confused with the base game sorghum, which is really going to be for grain itself. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen. The farmland lease screen is going to show us all of the Bible farmlands, how large those farmlands are, if those farmlands include any field or fields, what is included. Then lastly, ultimately, how much is that farmland going to cost us? As we can see, moving down through our farmland list, it looks like our farmlands, for the most part, up till 53, are matching farmland and field number. But 54 is not including field 54. So therefore we do kind of get off the number cycle here for the second half of the fields. Now we go ahead and take a look at our field calculator screen. This screen is going to show us the specific sizes of each particular field. And given the fact that this is a standard size map, we're going to find most of these fields are going to be fairly small in size. In fact, the vast majority of these are under one and a half hectares. The few being a little bit bigger. I think the largest one I saw so far is around eight. Take a look at our crop counter. We do indeed have a custom growth calendar here on this particular map. Remember, we have cotton and sugarcane removed. 
And then we have alfalfa, clover, and forage sorghum added. Now, if you take a look down through our prices screen, you will see that we do indeed have the ability to sell all of the crops that are included in the map. While we do not have the ability to see cotton or sugarcane, those have been explicitly removed from the map. Therefore, there is no chance you're ever going to possibly grow those here on Northeast End. In addition to that, we do have the ability to sell our eggs, wool, and milk, as well as our silage, hay, straw, and grass. As we move down through our base game production items, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game production items that are available to us here in Farm Sim 22. We also have the ability to buy bulk lime, as well as get rid of our stones at the debris crusher. When we have alfalfa, what I am assuming is alfalfa hay, because we then have alfalfa silage, we have an entry for clover and clover hay, then we have an entry for forage sorghum. Now do notice that we do not have a selling point for that. That is because that is designed exclusively for creation of chaff for silage. Now, as far as platinum expansion, we do not have the ability to sell any of the platinum expansion production items without putting down an additional sell point. But just be known that if you are playing with pumps and hoses, you do have the ability to sell your separated manure. Taking a look at our vehicle overview screen, we do have a decent list of starting equipment. A lot of it does need a bit of maintenance though. All of it is owned, none of it is leased. We do have the cow husbandry farm, our barn at the starting farm, but we do not have any cows in there. We do have contracts available. We do not own any production chains at the start, nor do we have any collectibles. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting fleet. We start out with the Valkyrie G125, the Massey Ferguson 4709M, and the Landini Rex 4090 GT small tractors. We've got the John Deere 4755 medium tractor, we have the Dutzfar Topliner 4090H Harvester that is paired up with the Topliner 4090H Grain Header, as well as the five row corn header. Then we also have the 4090H Header Trailer. We've got our John Deere Gator, as far as our little get around vehicle. We've got the Z18051 slash two Brantner trailer. We have also the Mercury 4000 L grape sprayer, the MRWK 6000 grape trailer, as well as the grape pruner. Well, I guess if you haven't figured it out, given the fact that we are in Italy, grapes are gonna play a little bit of a role. We have a Servo 25 Plow, as well as a Torino 3FX Cultivator. We have a Joker 4 CT Disc Caro, the Comba Plow Gold 3M Subsoiler. We have a Nordstein HK 25 NS 3030 Cedar and Power Harrow Combo. We have a Falcon 3 Planter. We have the RA142 TMR Mixer. We have the Q6M Front Loader Arms. Some mighty big front loader arms for our small and medium tractors. We have the Manure Fork and Pallet Fork. Then we round it out with a 750 and 900 kilogram front weight. As we mentioned, we do not have anything leased and this map does not have any custom vehicles or implements. Let's quick tab over here to our starting farm. And well, I guess one of the things you're gonna see right away, we do indeed have grapes pre-planted on this map and they are here at our starting farm. If you've been looking for a map, maybe you have the Antonio Cario DLC and you just haven't had a map really that's worthy of playing with that DLC, well, you know what? You may have found it right here with Northeast End. Let's go ahead and take a look around the farm itself. Got some nice regional looking buildings here. We have a little narrow Landini tractor for working up and down the grapes. We have a pallet of fertilizer as well as a pallet of seed. We have our workshop activation trigger here, but we do not see in any indication as to where our workshop or trigger is itself. That appears to be possibly right here in front of this particular arch. We have our sleep trigger located right there with some of more of our grape items. Our harvester, our trailer, more grapevines. 
We have a farm silo for dump and fill. Then here we can go to cover and uncover the dump point. A little fuel tank. Two silage bunkers of the pull through variety. We have our cow building. And we're going to have 200 cows in this facility. We have our food trough and our straw trigger located right there. We have our milk point. And we have our slurry point and our manure heap. Now we have two bale storage arches located right here. So we have our dump and then here's where we're going to pull out of those or pull out trigger. 308 per arch. Got a little bit of a trash pile over here in the corner. And then some more storage over here. Now, with respect to can the farms be customizable? Well, this farm is kind of a mixed bag. Some of these buildings can be sold, others cannot. We can definitely sell a silo, we can sell a farmhouse, we can sell the animals here, we can sell our arches. But as far as some of these other buildings, they are permanently embedded here in the map. So we also have some some babe hay bales, grass bales, and straw bales. Let's go ahead and take a look here at our build mode. Given the fact that we do have seven required mods, there will no doubt be several buildings and other things that are included here in the build mode as a result. Here we have those buildings here that are at the main farm. For silos, we do have a couple custom silos that are again part of the required mods. Silos extensions as well. We have a custom weighing station here that is part of the map. And then we have the couple houses. Take a look down through our production. We do have a custom production pre-placed on the map. It does not like it look like we have the ability to place that down if you want to put another one down. No custom cell points, greenhouses. We do have a couple of custom grapevines here. And I believe what it is, is it's changing the pole that is between the grapes. That is one. Here's the base one. See, it's kind of a darker color. And I believe this one is a metal pole. A little different size pole, at least. We do have some custom animal pins. They're, again, part of the required mods. And then as far as painting textures, we've got a very minimalistic list of painting textures and standard plants as well as trees. Let's go back up here because I did fail to pull up the soil map. This map is making use of the U.S. soil map that is a part of the Precision Farming mod. So let's go see ahead and see how that is being applied to our fields. As you can see to the north, we have a fair bit of silty clay, sandy loam, and loam. Then as we move down to the south and over to the east, we've got a bit more loam that is replacing the silty clay. It's going to take to the skies. As we've already heard in the description, we have a very flat map here. I'm going to do a little 360 rotation. And right in front of you, that is the custom winery. It does produce grape juice or raisins. We have our BGA off in the distance. Now, one thing I really thought was interesting is this setup. And overall, the, the map looks fabulous. It really gives you that sense of being in Italy. No, I've never been to Italy, but you know what? I got to travel internationally somehow. And, well, if FarmSim is enabling that, then maybe that's a pretty good thing. 
So we've got kind of this interesting setup here with respect to this waterway. And then this thing looks like it's going to be able to go down and draw up any debris that maybe has found its way on the grate. Dump it onto the conveyor belt and then into the dumpster. Kind of an interesting building. See, we have these kind of scattered all over the place. Very well done distance scenery on this map. Now, with respect to production being built in, we have nine production things built into the map. We have a dairy, bakery, grain mill, grape processing, or the winery. We have two medium greenhouses and two large greenhouses as well as the BGA. So the winery or the grape processing center is directly below here. We'll talk a little about that during the drive around. Down here in the southeast corner, we have our dairy, we have our bakery. We have our lime by point. We also have our stone crusher. We have another one of those interesting kind of debris Debris rakes, maybe that's what I'll call it. We have the BGA, and here at the BGA, if you own it, you can sell the BGA proper, which is this right there. Now, if you do not own the BGA, then of course you're obviously not going to be able to sell anything. But one thing that I did run into is I did not have the ability to sell our bunkers. It did pop up, it did ask if I wanted to sell them, but pretty much all I'm doing is selling the trigger. Visually, the buckers are remaining. Further up the eastern side of the map, we do have a grain cell point located right here. We have our animal, or not our animal dealer, our vehicle dealer located below. We have a biomass heating plant. We have our football field. Kind of a requirement, I think, for an Italian map. We have another cell point located right here. As well as below there. We have a restaurant cell point down there. Our grain mill, which is kind of north of our farm. We have our starting farm right there. Another grain selling point right there. This is the arable farm. Now, sadly, nothing at the arable farm is sellable. I did buy this land and try to sell these buildings. They are permanently embedded in the map. We'll be taking a closer look at those as we get around to our drive around portion. You will see scattered around the map, we have high power lines and regular utility poles scattered throughout the fields. All of the poles I tested did not have collisions. Then up here we have our four greenhouses. Another kind of interesting thing here is, I guess this is maybe a pumping station. Kind of neat. Let's make our way back here to our vehicle shop. Now with respect to our scoring, we are going to be giving the map a full point with respect to production being built in or areas set aside for such. We're also going to be giving the map a full point with respect to the ability to sell our base game props, animal outputs, and production points that are embedded with the map. We're not taking points off because we do not have cotton or sugar cane because they have been physically removed from the map. See, our Mahindra is spawned out here in the general parking lot. A decent sized area for our vehicles to spawn in at. Given the size of lots of these fields, I don't really see the player buying big machinery, so I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. Now, as far as our maintenance trigger or our dealer trigger, that is going to be here on the other side of this building. And that area is marked out. 
That is indeed the dealer trigger. Go ahead and make sure this gate is open. Kind of a narrow gate to get out of here. But again, I don't think that's going to be that big of a deal given the size of most of these fields. Also have another side gate over here. Go ahead and open that up because it's going to take, you know, till the dawn of tomorrow for it to finish opening. And we might as well head on out of the gate. Oh, well, looks like it finally, finally it's made its way open. So we have our biomass heating plant in here. Another eternally slow gate. So we have our dump point for our wood chips or logs. Then around the corner we do have a log cell trigger. I can see players opening these gates and leaving them open. Now, I did mention that this map had forage sorghum, and that's what this crop is right here. And this is kind of what I'm more used to seeing here in my area, as opposed to the base game sorghum. What we have is a very tall looking crop. Kind of looks like corn, except it's got, you know, the thing at the top. And again, it is grown for the purpose of running through a forage harvester and making chaff for silage. So we go all the way to the northeast corner of the map. This is where we're going to find our four greenhouses. They are located inside here. Pretty obvious what's going on with these. It's just base game of greenhouses. It would be nice if we could paint these ground textures that we do have kind of on the map. It's a little disappointing that we only have a limited subset of base game ground textures that are available to the player. With respect to can the farms be customized, since we have such a mixed bag, we're going to be giving the map a half a point with that regard. We can sell about half of the buildings at the main farm. The arable farm, which is a secondary farm, we can't sell any of those buildings. So quite frankly, maybe, maybe a half a point is being a little bit generous. As you can see, the high power lines do not have any collisions. I was hoping we could make our way over here to the arable farm from this road, but let's just go a little through the fields. Not to Grammy's house, but to, uh, to Grammy's farm, maybe. So we go ahead and buy this land. We have purchased this land. As you can see, we own farmland 34. That is exactly where we are right now, but I can tell you, this is supposed to be our silo dump grate and our silo fill pipe is supposed to be over here, right there. And in addition, we are supposed to have a sleep trigger Located here at this farmhouse. You're going to see that this trigger is non-functional. As well as the one over here at the side door. 
So I'm a little concerned that this may be coded a little bit wrong. When I was doing my reconnaissance of the map, I used the console command to buy all farmlands. And when I did that, I was pretty sure that I did at least have dump point and fill point icons. But the sleep trigger was still not functional. And maybe that's why I can't sell any of the buildings over here as well. Maybe they're just not properly being coded as being owned by me, even though I am buying the land. I do have to say, this building setup is pretty, pretty out there. Pretty cool thing about the fact that you've got these two giant brick buildings. We've got our dump point over there. We have our fill point over here. We have our silos inside of that building. Got a nice kind of shed over here off the side. And then more storage over here. We do have a marker trigger here as if this is also going to be a workshop. There we have a workshop trigger. Let's just drive in here and see. Yep, it is popping up. So quite possibly the map will need an update in order to possibly fix any coding that may be going on here that is an error. Again, I'm not really sure, but the fact that those things are not popping up as usable triggers really does kind of imply that maybe something's not quite set up right. Yeah, over here we have a bale cell point, and then we have a grain cell point inside. So we have our bales, and then we have our grains. And then kind of catty cornered from that, we're going to have our grain mill, our flour mill. I was hoping I could avoid this ultra slow gate. So we have a base game flower mill, so we have a dump point, interactive icon, and pallet spawn point. Quick before it completely opens. There we go. But directly in front of us, we do have our base game farm, our starting farm. Really well done map. I really like the looks, like the lay of the map and everything just wish that we could indeed remove everything from both farms now with respect to buildings using the new texturing technique as well as our ground textures and such but we're going to be having to give the map a half a point there as well a lot of these buildings are not basically making use of the new texturing technique they're kind of flat textures now overall i don't think that they are necessarily going to hamper your gameplay enjoyment here on this map but it is something i do want to point out so we have our great processing our custom winery here it's our interactive icon this is set up and i don't know italian but my guess is that means like receiving so this is set up we've got dump points here for our grapes we've got two of those in this kind of area and then we have another one over here on the outside. Would be nice to see the loading icon here, if not also the corner markers. Leaves a little bit to the imagination unless you know Italian, but that is probably where you're gonna be dumping your grapes into. Over here around the back, we do have corner markers. 
So this is going to kind of imply this is where our grapes are going to spawn. The fact that we have tanks here may also imply that this is also where we're going to be drawing out our grape juice. If possibly it is available in liquid form. Again, it's not, not super duper duper clear. We made our way over here to the small town area it is in the southeast corner. We have our dairy and our bakery. So we have our interactive icon for both of these here at the front. We're going to have to go around to the back in order to then see the rest of those triggers. We have an interesting building here under renovation or construction, like scaffolding. So around the back of the bakery, we have our dump point. We're not seeing a spawn point. It's going to be back here most likely, but we're just not seeing those marked out. Over here, we have our dairy. We'd like to see when the map gets updated, lowering those down to the ground. Then we have our dump point there as well. Oh, a little uh, volleyball court off to the side. Nice little detail. nice seeing these little these little details and over here we have our lime oh this is the same I have no idea what that says but it's the same sign that is over there on the house We have our line by point. We have our stone crusher. And then I think this road is going to take us up to the BGA and possibly beyond. Uh, let me know down in the comments below who's going to do the first thing when they load up this map is run around and open up all these gates. So over here, we can sell this scale. That is one of the few things that we can sell here. We can sell the bunker triggers, but the bunkers are going to remain. And if we own the BGA, we can get rid of it. So if we wanted to, we would have a decent area here to build out our own biogas plant. Just note that pretty much everything on the other side of these pavers here are going to be fixed in place. that very well may cover it our flower mill is on the other side of those trees we might have a couple things over here that we missed when we were starting out so go ahead and cover those We have a grain cell point. This is going to be the um, cooperative. So we've got that right there. Now, with respect to our final scoring metric, player interactive areas being clearly marked. 
We've already kind of run across a couple of those areas that are not clearly marked. So we are going to be taking off a quarter point with respect to that. So that's going to give the map three quarters of a point for that scoring metric. Which should be giving the map a total score of 3.75 out of 5. A quick rundown. Where we lost the most points is the customization of the individual farms. Here we have our animal dealer. Oddly enough, an interesting building for that. Also being in town. We also lost a significant amount of points, half a point with respect to building textures being using new texturing technique. While you could decide that, you know, that really doesn't matter to you. We've got our fuel right over there. It may matter to some, so I do bring that up. If it doesn't matter to you, then hey, then you take total score 3.75 out of four, suddenly because textures don't matter to you. That's the best way of doing things here. We've got our another grain cell point there. And I think that is pretty much going to wrap it up. So guys, let me know what you all think down in the comments below with respect to North East N. Again, this is an Italian map. It would be a great way to make use of the Antonio Cario DLC if you have picked that up and you really haven't done too much with respect to grapes because the main starting farm does include grapes. We also have a couple other nice interesting additions as far as crops to the map. We have clover and alfalfa as well as forage sorghum. And until next time, happy farming.